Nandini doesn't seem to have been surprised by the big bad guy's temper tantrum. For three years she had been swinging the great warrior like a swinging doll on the end of a rope she held in her hand. For the first time, that rope has been cut today. The rock that was swinging as it was swinging has gained life and self-knowledge. Nandini seemed to expect this. She has nothing to do with that sin anymore. Nandini got up without showing any nervousness and bowed down in front of the great Pavuvatarayar. She said in a voice choked with emotion. Even sarcasm could not affect their admiration for me. I have been deceiving them who trusted me and given me unparalleled privileges. That is truth. I lived in their palace to fulfill my purpose. I was doing many things without their knowledge. I was in touch with conspirators. I seduced youths like Kanamaran and Parthipendra and used them for my purpose. But, sir, I have not deceived you in one thing only. From the day I married them, I had them as my heart. Their fruitful clan, which has produced great heroes from generation to generation, has not suffered the slightest stigma from my moral lapses. If I am still alive, such a stigma will never befall them. Nandini. What is this word you speak? What other stain can befall my clan? Alas! By my hand, this by my hand, strike the sinner. Have you a sword? Where is it? So cut off my hand yourself. Help me what you can. That's one thing. No, no. Don't. This hand has a job to do. A very important job. Don't think what I've said is true and do something like that. Swami. I will not do such a thing. I could not use that sword in the name of the one whom I had wanted to kill for so long. You came to my aid when I was afraid that time would slip away. Adi Padaki. I have come to help you. What words do you say? Sandali. O demon in the form of a woman. If I had known that such a thing would happen, I would never have come there. O oh goddess! Shouldn't the sinful Yama have taken me away when I was drowning in the flood of Kolidatha? But I don't want to tarnish my clan by making them realize such treachery. That is why I tried so hard to get them to go from Kadampur to Tanjore. You also went. But fate has brought them back. They did not offer to help me. But fate came to my aid at the right time. Yes sir. It was fate that raised doubts about my morals in their minds. If their intention was only to prevent me from taking the blame, they would have come publicly. Suspecting that I was committing a moral lapse and betraying them, you came in disguise and in a secret way. At least on that point their doubts must have been cleared. If not, settle now. Wife, the elders have said that the husband is also the life partner. It was because I was their true sister that fate brought them to me at the right time to help me. Nandini. Enough. Stop. Your words are torturing me. Rather, kill me at once. I have no strength in my arms to even stop. No pain in my body. If you don't have the courage to kill me with a sword, then really mix poison in the porridge and give me. King. Forgive me no. You cannot forgive me. It is impossible to forgive in this life. Let me tell you one thing, listen. If both of us take rebirth and are born on this earth, then we will have no memory of this birth. When I deceived them and lived in their palace, their treasure the use of the object for my vindication, and the fateful outcome at the Kadampur Palace, none of this they remember. Neither do I. I want to atone for the betrayal I have done to them in this birth. In the next birth, I will marry them. I will be their true spouse. This is the word. Now I am going to pray to all the gods as long as there is life in this body. Hearing these words, the great sage was moved in body and soul and said, Nandini. Go away. Leave this place at once. If you keep talking like this for a little while longer, my intellect will fail. I will have to give up my duty. Enough of the calamities you have caused me for so long. I am still beating my intellect and making me crazy. Don't. Go away, go away now. Said. I resurrected those who wanted to take my life. 
you threw away the porridge that I gave you a while ago, calling it poison. But with this hand I kept their mouths watering when they were unconscious for three days. For three years you made me the empress of your palace and gave me unparalleled honor. I cannot do otherwise in this birth. However, these three days I had given them to do the work with my hands. This memory will satisfy me as long as I live. I'm coming, sir. Answer. But with this hand I kept their mouths watering when they were unconscious for three days. For three years you made me the empress of your palace and gave me unparalleled honor. I cannot do otherwise in this birth. However, these three days I had given them to do the work with my hands. This memory will satisfy me as long as I live. I'm coming, sir. Answer. But with this hand I kept their mouths watering when they were unconscious for three days. For three years you made me the empress of your palace and gave me unparalleled honor. I cannot do otherwise in this birth. However, these three days I had given them to do the work with my hands. This memory will satisfy me as long as I live. I'm coming, sir. Answer. Nandini. Why are you asking me goodbye? Go away without asking. If you linger here, my wits will stumble. Yes, even if they feel like killing me again, they will. Lord. I would consider it a privilege even for a servant to have to give up his life at their hands. Yet you came in disguise to kill me in the first place. Therefore go thou, just say this and leave. If I hadn't come and interrupted then, what would have happened? How did you intend to complete your mission? Yes, yes, I was waiting to say that too. Their anger has baffled my wits. Swami. When you went to Tanjavur, I gave you an assurance that your clan dharma will not be tarnished by my hands. I did tricks to get it. Mainly, I trusted Manamekali too much. Kari Kaler would run in a frenzy to kill Vandiyadeva who was hiding there for some other reason, then Manamekala would kill him. In order not to blame Manamekali, Vandiyadeva would say I killed him. He would agree, and so I settled my deception on the old hunchback, I had planned all this but it was not necessary. No, Nandini. No. Kari Kaler did not take his own life. Are you trying to deceive me too? Swami. If you don't throw away I Tumpan Kari's knife right now, Kari Kaler will be killing himself with Veerapandian's sword in the next moment. Yes, yes, if I had delayed for a moment I would not have committed this great act of treachery. On the contrary, I would have suspected you. Nandini. Fate has done it, it cannot be changed. Fate has done me good in a way. If both of us take another birth, you will have me as your spouse. Say you want to? I have never heard sweeter words in my life. Not even from you. I shall die thinking of those words when my spirit departs. Yes, Nandini. You and I cannot live together in this life. So go. Before you go, if there is any gruel left for what I have spilled out of anger, give it away. If there is no gruel, at least give some water with your hand and let it go. Said the reaper. And so, sir. I will thank you as long as I live for this kindness. Nandini said and went to get porridge from the stove. At that time all Workadian thought of slipping out of the cave. He knew everything he wanted to know. No use being there anymore. There is also risk. He left thinking that he could go outside and think about what to do next.